Hello everybody, today we are officially releasing the Epic Fig Rig add-on, um, and in this video I'm just going to kind of go over all of the features of the add-on and the rig, uh, just so you can better understand it and use it better in your animations. Uh, so the first thing obviously you want to do is get the add-on into Blender. So once you've downloaded the zip file, which is in the description, uh, you can hop into Blender and go up to Edit, Preferences, and then make sure you're in the Add-ons tab. Go to Install right here. And then you need to locate the file that you downloaded. So for me, that would be right here. And once you've found it, go ahead and click Install Add-on. Since I've already installed it, I don't really need to install it again, so I'm just going to click Cancel. Uh, once you've installed the add-on, uh, it should show up right here. And if it doesn't, just go ahead and search Epic, and it should show up. Um, you should be able to see the Epic Fig Rig add-on right here. Uh, make sure that the add-on is enabled, and then go ahead and save preferences, and you can exit out of this. Once you've done that, uh, just to make sure that it works, click N. And you can see right here the epic fig rig add-on. You should be able to see it. And you can see all these little buttons right here. Um, the biggest thing I think to mention right now is the user manual. If you click on that button, it'll take you right here. The epic fig rig user manual. And here, it's basically just going to talk about all the different features of the rig and all the different bones and how to use them. I do recommend if you're going to use this rig to just at least scroll through this. You don't have to understand, you know, everything that's on here, but at least scroll through it and kind of, uh, you might get a better idea of how the rig works. Okay, back in Blender, um, the next thing we want to do is import a character from Mechabricks. I already kind of had a, have a character that's downloaded, so I'm just going to bring that in real quick. All right, so this is my little character, dude. Uh, I'm just going to use this guy to kind of demonstrate all of this, the features of the add-on. Um, so previously, if I wanted to rig my character, I would have to go to File, Append, and then Append the Rig, and then I'd have to manually parent each bone to each part of the rig. But now, all I have to do is select each part, so I'm just going to select and Shift Select, Hold Shift, and select all of the parts of the LEGO minifigure, and then I'm going to go up here and click Rig Selected Minifigure, and boom. Um, the Lego min minifig is automatically rigged and ready to go. And you can see that it all works perfectly. Um, you may notice, the first thing you may notice is that we now have two arm bones instead of one like we normally did in the last rig. Um, the reason we have two is because one bone controls the in-socket rotation and the other bone controls the out-of-socket rotation. And this can be really useful when you're posing your characters because it can save you a lot of time. And you won't have to worry about all of these transform blocks over here. Uh, you, can just, you can just choose which bone you want to move. The next really cool thing about the arms is these little knobs over here. Basically, they allow you to easily select the opposite arm from one side instead of having to go all the way around and click this and then go back and then click over here. Uh, you can just from one place select both of the arms, and you can very, very easily uh, access both of them. It's, we have the same thing for the legs. Um, so if you're animating kind of from one side, and you're kind of doing this, um, it becomes much easier to pose your character instead of, you know, having to go around, keep switching back and forth. The next cool bone that we added is the center of mass bone. Um, this bone is really useful because it allows you some really it allows you control over the minifigure that you wouldn't have had otherwise. Um, with the IK bone, you know, you don't get the same kind of freedom of movement with the character. Um, but the center of mass allows you to basically rotate the character in any position. And this can really help with when you're doing flips or rolls. The center of mass bone can really easily achieve that effect. The next two bones that we kind of added are the torso roll bone, um, which I think is pretty cool, and the body roll bone which basically just tilts the whole body. Um, uh, this, this kind of movement happens a lot in stop motion animations. And previously it was a little bit more difficult because it's, the effect is not the same with the master bone. Uh, with the body roll, you know, this, this kind of movement is much easier. And with the torso roll, this thing, you don't really see this a lot in stop motion, but 
It can just be something cool that you could add for a secondary movement um, when you're doing your animation. If a character is jumping or something, uh, this, this little movement can be kind of fun to add. The next thing we should talk about is right here, the Rig Settings tab. Um, if you open this up, uh, you'll see that we have some more options on how to control some aspects of the rig. Uh, the first thing is RMIK. Uh, if you turn this on, you'll notice that we have this RMIK bone. And we also have two more sliders that let us control some factors of the IK bone. So inside of the arm IK, we have the arm socket lock and the IK stick. So basically what the arm socket lock does is it lets you decide whether you want the IK arm movements to be locked inside the socket or unlocked. So you can move it outside of the socket, however freely you would like. Um, so you can switch between those or the IK stick allows you to, if this is off, um, the IK bone will follow the movement of the rig wherever you're going. But if you turn this on, the IK will stick in its original position and the arms will kind of follow it. Um, you know, obviously depending on the animation or depending on whatever the scene you're doing, this can be really useful. Um, all of these sliders, by the way, are keyframable. So all you have to do is right click and click insert keyframe and it'll automatically insert keyframes. So you can easily switch between IK and FK by keyframing this, this slider value right here. Um, the next slider value you may notice is the leg IK slider. Basically, it's pretty self-explanatory. It lets you switch between the FK leg option, like so, and the IK leg option. Um, it'll also take away this IK bone uh, right here. So um, again, this is personal preference. Uh, you can kind of choose how you would like to animate your character. And based on that, um, you can uh, go ahead and choose leg IK. The last two options you may notice are the head accessory bone size and the head bone size. Basically what these do is they allow you to control the size of these head bones. And this can be very helpful when it comes to, um, you know, if your character has a sort of a helmet or a hat, um, it may cover up these bones. So you may not be able to use them. Uh, so you can just move the slider, make it bigger so you can see it on top of the hat. Um, and so this can come in really handy with certain characters. The next really awesome feature that this rig has is the accessory snapping. This will basically allow you to very easily snap objects like this lightsaber straight into your character's hand. Previously, you would have to sort of position the lightsaber like, you know, towards the hand, and then you would have to rotate it and, uh, sort of position in here and this even you you probably won't get it exactly right and this can still take some time to you know sort of get it to work perfectly and you know still not centered properly you know so this this might take some time to get to get it into the hand um instead what we've done is we've made it so you can just all you have to do is select the object that you want to snap shift select the armature and just choose which hand you want to snap it to. So this is the right hand. So we're just going to hit right hand and boom. Then in order to just fix this right here, we click GYY and you can choose how you want your character to hold it. So we're just going to move it like that. And it'll take like two seconds to snap it in. So again, just select, select the object, shift select the armature, select the hand and GYY. Then, um, I also just quickly imported this little hat in um so if i just grab this hat it's the same concept just grab the object shift select the armature and you can select head right here and it'll automatically snap to the armature one thing to note with the accessory snapping is that it doesn't parent the object to the armature so for the sword uh you would have to use the dynamic parent add-on which we will link in the description and uh for the hat you would have to actually parent it manually uh, with the, you know, the head accessory bone, um, you would have to parent this manually and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Before we do that though, uh, I just want to quickly talk about one of the coolest bones that I think are on this rig and that's the pivot bone. And basically what the pivot bone allows you to do is, well, it's pretty self-explanatory. It lets you pivot the character on this one bone. This is something that is really commonly done in stop motion animations, uh, but it's a little bit more difficult to do in 3D. Uh, but that was before the pivot bone was introduced. So basically, um, you can choose which leg you want the pivot foot to be on. So right now it's on the right foot. So we could just choose to switch it to the left foot. 
and now we can pivot it on the left foot. And when you switch the pivot bone, you'll notice that it'll add a couple of keyframes here so you can switch them mid animation. So you can choose, you know, the left foot, right foot, and it'll it'll keyframe this this uh the pivot bone. And this can be really useful when you're animating. The next really cool thing that we've added into this rig is the master bone control. Basically, both of these buttons is dealing with the position of the master bone while you're animating your character. So a lot of the times when you're making an animation and your character is kind of walking, um, the character tends to sort of walk away from the master bone. And he, he, he sort of, you, you may after a while sort of lose the master bone uh, behind the character. And then if you want to pivot the character, you know, it doesn't really, you know, work as well. Or if you want to use a center of mass, um, this can be a little bit annoying, especially if you're, you know, animating a large scene, your character's like all the way over here and your pivot and your master bone is like all the way over here. Um, it can become a little bit annoying. So we've introduced the master bone control. All you have to do is just click reset master bone and it'll automatically snap the master bone right to your character. Um, it also adds a couple keyframes. So if you're, if you're, if your character is moving somewhere and walking somewhere, then you just click the reset master bone. And the master bone will just come back and, and your animation previously will be saved because um, the master bone movement will be keyframed. The next button right here is the snap master bone. Now this is extremely useful for walk and run cycles and it makes them actually possible because normally if you wanted to make a rock and run cycle, you would have to use the master bone as your movement so that you can control where your character goes. And that'll, that'll lead to sliding, which is obviously something that we want to avoid as much as possible. So if you want to make a good walk, you have to use the IK bone right here. And so what ends up happening is I'm going to try to make, you know, some, a really simple walk animation. Um, so just pretend that this dude is walking a little bit over here. Um, he's just walking from, uh, this point to this point, and it's just a walk cycle. So basically. Um, instead of having to remake the walk, and so another um, nine frames um, over here, you'd have to go and uh, move his little and move again, and then we would have to keyframe this. And it, instead of having to do that over and over again, all we have to do is click the snap master, and then we can take the walk cycle that we did and just repeat it again. And so now. The snap will come and the walk cycle just repeats. Okay, so um, just real quick, I'm going to show you how to manually set up the rig and how to uh, set up the head or extra accessories uh, for the rig. So um, the first thing you need to do is you're going to need to try and find your epic fig rig file and you're going to need to extract it. And once you extract it, and you look inside the folder, um, there should be an append file, append.blend. Uh, once you locate that folder, um, you should save it somewhere. So, and once you know where that append file is, go to file, append, and locate that file. So for me, it's going to be right here, um, append.blend. I'm going to click on it, and then go to collection and the epic fig rig, uh, and then click append. And once you do that, uh, you should see this. Um, just go ahead and hide the bone shapes and those things will disappear and you'll just be left with the rig. But the rig, you will notice, is not parented to the actual mesh. So in order to do that, you need to, um, you need to manually parent each part of the Lego figure to each bone. So you do that by first clicking uh, a part and then shift clicking the armature. Then you go into pose mode by going here or you can just click control tab to toggle and you click whichever bone you want to parent to. So for the arm bone, you parent to this bone and then you, you press control P and you parent to bone. And once you do that, um, your, your mesh will be parented to the rig. And you're going to have to do that for every single part. So for the arm bone, you parent it to this bone right here. So shift click, 
uh, go into pose mode, select this bone, control P, parent to bone. Then for the wrist, you parent right here, shift click, control tab, click on the bone, control P, parent to bone. And I'm just going to do the same thing right here. Um, and as you can see, as we're doing this, slowly we're, we are reparenting the mesh. Um, just kind of watch how I parent each bone. I'm going to speed up the recording a little bit so you can kind of watch how it, um, I do it. And uh, once you see it once, you can kind of just copy what I do and it should work fine. Okay, so, so far, I've parented all of the arms, and I've parented the torso, I've parented the head, and I've parented both the legs. So by now, if you followed what I've done, all the bones will work except for the torso roll bone. In order to parent the torso roll bone, you need to go down here into the armature tab, the little dude who's kind of saying hi, and you need to shift you need to make sure that this is checked. So in order to do that, you need to shift click on this little thing to toggle it and then go down to viewport display and check in front. And once you do that, you're going to be able to see through the armature. But most importantly, you'll be able to see this little bone right here. Um, and actually, you, sh you should have checked both of these. You should be able to see this bone and this bone. Uh, for some reason, this tends to take, sometimes this might take a couple tries, but you need to first, you need to select the torso, uh, shift, select the armature, go into pose mode, select this bone, control P, parent to bone, then go back, select the torso again, shift, click on the armature, control tab, click on the bone, control P, bone. And that should work, but and it did. Sometimes it doesn't work. Just do the same thing over and over again. Or if like one of the bone is working, but the other one doesn't, just try to parent the bone that doesn't work again, and it should work. And once this works, you can turn in front off, and you can hide these two layers again. And now, um, the rig works completely. Um, if you want to um, parent an accessory for the head, uh, which I'm going to show you right now, you would just, uh, I'm going to quickly go ahead and uh, snap that to the head. Uh, in order to parent something like an accessory, you need to first, uh, obviously go into the rig, rig settings, change the head accessory bone size so you can actually see it. Then click on the little accessory, shift, click on the bone, the head accessory bone, control tab, then click on the bone, control P and click bone. Now, the head accessory bone, if I go into pose mode and click on the head accessory bone, the head accessory bone controls the um, little accessory. Um, and it'll also follow with the um, rest of the armature. For something like a cape, um, you would parent that to probably the torso bone and something like a, ch uh, like a chest plate or something that someone would wear you would parent that also to the torso bone, just like I did with the head accessory bone. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to talk about are basically just a bunch of things you want to avoid doing when using the rig. Uh, the first thing you do not want to do is when you import a character from Mechabricks, um, there always is a small empty right here, if I can select it. This little empty um, that, that basically controls the entire character, you want to delete this empty whenever you use the rig. Um, so make sure you can delete it right here, or you could try to select it and delete it. Uh, I find this just a little bit easier. So make sure you delete that empty. Um, the reason you want to delete it, um, is because, um, for the master bone reset and the master bone snap, um, having the empty there and having the master bone actually parented to the empty, indirectly parented to the empty can sort of mess up these buttons. So you need to make sure to delete that empty every time you import the rig. Um, 
the next thing that you need to not do is uh, move the rig in object mode. Uh, we have it so it's automatically uh, disabled, so you know you won't just do it by accident. Um, but just make sure not to move the rig in object mode. If you want to move the rig, just grab the master bone and you can move it from here. Um, usually when you're animating, it's not smart to move it in object mode anyways. Uh, so just make sure that you don't do that. The next thing I'm going to talk about are basically the um, axis locks. Um, we have them set as defaults here. Pretty much all of them um, you should keep the same. I wouldn't recommend fiddling with these too much. Um, you know, for most of these bones, it's not going to matter too much because the arms, you have the double bones and you have complete freedom with this one. I just try to stay away from uh, messing with these too much. For the feet, usually it's okay because um, this isn't really affected by a lot. You can kind of play with these a bit with the feet, and I tend to do that anyways. Um, but for the rest of the bones, I'd say try to stay away from messing with these too much. The next thing is uh, for things um, like head accessories, um, you just need to make sure that when you've parented it, I'm just going to parent this one real quick. Whoops. Uh, when you've parented an accessory, um, like so, you need to make sure that when you unparent it, you use the Alt P command. So if you want to unparent this, um, just click, just select the um, object that you have parented to the armature and hit Alt P and then clear parent. And now you can move it freely and it's not affected by the, uh, the, by the rig anymore. The last big thing that you want to avoid doing is if you want to rename the armature, um, make sure that you rename it in both the armature object and the armature data, um, you know, tabs, um, because of some of the way that the buttons work, these two names have to be the same. Um, we have some code set up so that if you end up changing the name in the armature tab, um, and then you click one of these buttons, the name will automatically switch back to whatever the object tab or whatever the name is over here. Um, just so you remember, if you are going to change the name, um, change it in both or just change it right here in the object tab um, just to keep it so that um, the buttons will work fine. Other than that, this is basically it. Uh, if you have any more questions, um, you can find us on Discord. Uh, I'll link the Blender Break server in the description and we'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, this is still, a lot of these buttons are still in beta version, and we plan to improve some things about the add-on and the rig. Um, so in the future, uh, if you click the download link and some of the buttons look different, um, that's just because we've updated it. Uh, we'll put sort of like um, everything that we've updated, like sort of a list of that in the description so you can kind of see what we've changed. Um, but other than that, thanks for watching. And I will see you all later.